Isaac and Carolina. Um, so let's begin again. Um, candidates will give a brief three minute opening statement. Uh, we have 15 minutes worth of questions and answers. Each candidate has two minutes to answer each question. And the duration of the program is approximately 15 minutes. Beginning with, so beginning at 11.45, we'll have the Q&A from the audience. Our speak, our, uh, our Siwanaka questionnaires uh, will be Mabel Martinez, Lindsay Walker, and Ryan Shadok. Okay. Open your mind from SGA, yes. Good morning. I'm Jermaine Isaac, the current city body president of uh, LIU Brooklyn. And I would like to thank First C. Renanka for putting on this debate this morning and thank the students for coming out this uh, early morning. And to my administration and I, we are confident that our record speaks for itself and we look forward to still remain as the students dedicated and continuing leaders of the campus. <coughs> thank you. for this opportunity, um, to thank all the advisors that are here for this opportunity, and I just want to say that this is my first time running for student government, but I have held other positions, and I'm sure you'll find me a worthy candidate along with my team. Thank you. Okay, so our first question is for each candidate, and we would like to know what can you bring to the position that previous presidents have not done before? So what do you mean you like to start? Well, we have done exceptionally well uh, this year in progress for this campus. And next year, we want to continue the work that we developed. We want to continue to build scholarships. We want to continue to create on-campus events educationally and socially for the students on campus. So that's what we want. We want to continue the service that we started, and we want to finish it next year. My team and I um, have the ability to bring a lot more than just events to this campus. We are looking at social events on and off campus, and we wish to do something about printing, as I'm sure we're all aware. Um, printing is 10 cents a page at the library, 15 cents if you want double-sided, and 15 cents if you want color, on top of you know the rising cost of tuition every single year. Um, we're looking to do something about that. We're hoping to reach an agreement with the administration, and we're also looking to bring back campus pride because currently I don't see very many people wearing Blackbird T-shirts and you know coming out to events. We've won the uh, NEC Northeast Conference, excuse me, twice in a row now, and you know it's it's just upsetting that not more of us are wearing our Blackbird T-shirts and showing some pride and you know being excited about it. So we're hoping to do that. Thank you. Thank you. So our question for Carol, in the, in the Siwanaka um, like interview that you had previously with a member, you said that student government needs to change. So what do you believe student government, um, student government needs to change and why? Okay, well, right now, currently, I am the president of Alpha Chi and the um, president-elect of PISA and I'm the historian of APHA. And um, in all of these three clubs, we have had problems this year with our budgets. And for Alpha Chi, we didn't receive our budget kits and the amount of money that we had until December 21st. I looked it up to make sure. December 21st, we received our budget. So that's an entire semester that we had to postpone events and, and cut down on the number of events that we had to, uh, for our members because we weren't sure if we had the money or not. We had no idea, and we tried calling the SGA, the current administration. Nobody would cut back to us for weeks. So I really feel that there should be more communication between the student government and the actual students that use the money. Thank you. Um, my question is, what issues will you be focusing on next year and why? What do you think is the biggest issue that the student body will be facing next year? And how do you plan on solving it? This is to Oh, to Yes, our first issue is that we realize that a lot of students are struggling with tuition. And we want to create a fall and a spring scholarship. Currently, student government has provided over close to $5,000 of scholarship money this year. And next year, we have a vision of increasing that to having a fall and spring scholarship for students. As well, we would like to uh, continue to work on the reconstruction of the student center 
that is supposed to begin uh, post graduation, the first day after graduation. There's supposed to be a new conference room, there's supposed to be new furniture, and a new room for the students to attend to. As well, our government would like to work on building up a better relationship and communicating with students as best way as possible by creating a bi weekly newsletter that will be directly from our office that will go to all the students with current updates bi weekly so that students can constantly stay informed. So, those are just some of the ideas, as well as going green. We, will have, we have a set plan for that. So there are many things that we have set forth for the next year. Thank you. So now we have Akeem. Um, Akeem, would you like to give any um, opening remarks? Um, hi, my name is Akeem Jones. Um, I'm former president of CSM. I also work for the previous um, SGA board in the Joint Hippo Life. And I think um, the SGA right now need a lot of improvement. And if you vote for me, I plan to bring those changes that will make um, a lot of work go into and increase student spirit. Thank you. So, um, any questions? Well, we didn't actually hear Carol's response to your question. We're going to ask different questions. Okay. Um, so, pretty much, we know that uh, facing uh, this fall 2011 semester, we had the teacher strike going on. Um, this question is going to be directed to all three candidates. Starting off with Jermaine, how do you feel that this uh, student, well, teacher strike impacted your administration and how do you hope to prevent this in the future? The first day uh, of school was the convocation day for freshman class. I gave a speech in that morning and around 3 p.m. we were phone called that we were going on strike from uh, faculty. We did not know this was going to happen until everyone else knew it was going to happen. And we had to immediately act. We as the student government did it, in the, did it to the best of our ability by finding out what, why did this strike happen and how can we solve this. We met with faculty and administration every single day well past the normal hours. We also uh, spoke to students outside. We spoke to faculty outside while they were picketing to find out both ends of the story, what is going on. We were all lost at the moment. And as student government, we took the initiative to find out what was going on behind the scenes. We were able to hold meetings constantly. We even asked for uh, administration that if this strike was not going to end by that following Monday, we was going to have a student rally. I remember that day. We spoke. They asked us why would we have a student rally because students are getting fed up. Students were tired. And as student government, we handled the situation professionally. And how we can solve this problem? stay in contact with administration and faculty to get updates so that we can avoid this situation. Because of what we know, that this happens almost every 10 years. And because tuition goes up constantly here. So there has to be a way to either cap the tuition or keep the students informed before something huge like that take place again. Thank you. Thank you. And Akeem, I'd like to direct this question to you as well. Um, even though you were the former president of S um, CSM, excuse me, uh, what kind of reactions did you see from the students in regard to the strike? Um, they was completely lost. I think this event was a movement. I think the administration knows it was coming, and I think they should have worked closer with the unions of these professors because over 50% of the students actually commute. So we came here, we wasted our day, our time, and our money, basically, and it should be handled better. I think SGA should work closely, not only with professors, but with their union. Thank you. I think the student population has a right to be in the know as well. And it doesn't matter what student government is doing um, to communicate with the faculty and the administration if the student population has no idea what's going on. If everybody's in the dark, then it's just as good as not doing anything. And in that case, I think I personally and my administration um, and my team actually would inform the students every step of the way and let them know today we had a meeting today we spoke with the uh, professors after hours we spoke to the unions otherwise if the students don't know what's going on they can't support you and they can't support the professors they don't know what side you stand on and they ultimately have no idea what's happening on campus all right thank you okay thank you so my question is for Carol. Because you mentioned that you wanted to boost campus spirit by having more more on campus events. So I would like to know how will you get students who live on campus to participate in these clubs and campus events to bring students together? 
I actually just want to make a little correction. Um, I did say on and off campus events. Um, so we aren't very um, focused on just campus events because I know that this is mostly commuter school and I myself come from the very tip of Staten Island and it takes me two hours to get here. And I know for certain events I can't be here because I'll get home the next day because there are transportation. There isn't transportation. So uh, what we're looking to do is for the students that live on campus and can make it to these events, we'd love to have you. It'd be great and you're going to love it. If you do live off campus and you can make it at these times, even better. The more the merrier. Uh, but for students that live off campus, we're looking for a central location, say Manhattan or something like that. Um, and that way, more students will be eager to come and see, um, say, a Broadway play or whatever it is that it may be. And um, it'll be a little easier for students to reach there than to come all the way to campus if they live a little closer. Actually, I have the same question for you. Uh, basically, I think um, campus spread is going crazy when every student know what's going on because a lot of times the events are kept. We don't have no idea that it's actually being kept or it's going on because lack of advertisement. For example, when President Steenberg was here, no one knew President Steenberg was coming. There was no um, advertisement. They, 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 I went um, to form SG. It was asked, when SG was asked, hey, how come the student body didn't know? They said, quote unquote, um, we send out your Facebook, but um, according to the stats, there's only, the average human being basically have 125 friends on Facebook, and SGA is not one of them. So no one, it was like 12 people that showed up. So I think if you reduce the channels of um, people that actually you have to go through to get your advertisement out to the student body, that alone will increase just by being exposed. You have a bigger target market. The students will know what's going on. Like every time my event is going on, it's like one or two flyer, and you tell somebody about it, like, hey, that actually happened at LIU? They have no idea. They left in the dark completely. So just by proper advertising alone, will definitely increase the student spirit and campus spirit. And by doing more innovative events, not the same old events every year over and over and with this and that. Like, try something new. Um, have a spelling bee and give, like, gift cards out to students. Um, do something innovative. Like, for example, when you guys brought Drake here, no students are allowed to interview him. You guys got to let people interview these people. They can't just come on and come off and don't have any interaction with students. Now we have Ludacris April 19th. Not at LIU Brooklyn campus, but at LIU CW Post. We need to have more events at this school, at the Combo Theater, you know, just so we could increase the student activity and increase the campus spirit. Thank you. Can I make a response to that? Uh, there were many events in the Como Theater this year. The Gospel Choir had a huge concert. Uh, the, the dance dance uh, cycle. There was just a play in the Como Theater from the uh, theater department. That was I was I attended that. That just happened uh, this past Friday. Uh, half of our class was there. Many of our students was there. Uh, also, as far as any of events, we had a cookout this uh, fall semester, a movie night. We uh, we had an educational resume workshop, internship, and scholarship seminars entrepreneurial workshops in February, clothing drive for the community in Brooklyn. We gave away two thousand, over 200 toys on Christmas and had a holiday program for kids in the community. We pushed for Aramark to uh, hire Brooklyn students. We had a great convocation presence, campus-wide trips. We had uh, a, gra a graduate semi-formal coming up. We have a senior boat ride coming up. So we have innovative events. We have done innovative things, and we want to continue to do innovative things. As far as the uh, President Steinberg form, it took us a month and a half to plan something at that magnitude. The turnout may have not been high, however, it took student government almost a month to do this. We advertised on all social media outlets, not just Facebook. It was in the newspaper, it was advertised there in the newspaper, a whole section on it. We informed organization leaders to spread the word at our State of the Campus meeting. We put on forms in the month of February for every class, from freshman class to the graduate class, to acquire questions for the form for this strike. We personally even walked around and told people why are we having this meeting and the importance of it in relation to the strike. And we cannot force students to come out. The student government cannot email students personally, one, uh, and that's out of our control. We wanted the whole campus there. We did this for the students in response. And President Steinberg has not addressed students on that level in years. We have his attention, and we plan to do that again and reflect it twice a semester. 
One, to gather information. The second one, to do a follow-up. So this is what we plan to do in regards to that strike and the uh, town hall meeting. Mayor Rebuttal, I actually um, did a few surveys, over 50 actually, and no students thought about any of these events that was going on. I actually passed by the, um, the gospel event that was keeping coming to There was more administration there than actual students. Right. You guys have a marketing unit, and go to each classroom. It might be a little tedious, but give everybody a flyer. Let them know this is going on, that's going on. We're left in the dark. I actually asked students, hey, do you know who SGA is? They're like, SGA? What's SGA? Is that the guy who made parking 5% cheaper? Like, no one knows anything about SGA. You need to, you know, be a little more, um, Put a little more effort into it. Don't be so complacent. If I may also add something. Um, I'm sorry. I I know um, SGA is not able to <clears throat> is not able to directly email students. But besides Facebook, for people that don't have Facebook, there's also the option to make a website. And I know this is free because um, a lot of my friends have done so in the past. You can make your own website, advertise it as the Student Government Administration website. And you're set. The students will know about it. If they're interested in knowing, they'll know. You put updates on there. <coughs> Excuse me. You put updates on there whenever there is one. And, and that's it. You can't say you didn't try to reach out. If, if you're just walking around, students might have class. Stu um, in the events of the strike, sure, students didn't have class, but a lot of them just left. They wanted to go get lunch. They wanted to go chill with their friends. Whatever it may be. They don't want to stay on campus if, if they don't know what's going on. And, they don't really have an interest to speak to you directly. Let's say they have a job. They called them in. They didn't have class. They went to, to work. What, the, then how are you going to let them know what's going on? They're not on campus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My question is for Jemina. Um, what will you do about the students who take classes at night and they pay the student activity of $35? How do they get to participate in activities if all the activities are in okay. 65, I'm sorry, 65. How do they get to participate in like, all the activities and clubs on campus if all the activities are in the evening? We have all the activities during the daytime. We have to look at the majority of the students. We can have events that's held during the daytime, but we want to know who's going to actually show up during the daytime when they're either studying or focusing in their classrooms. So that's why most activities are held at night. But we switch it up on certain days. Some days we may have an event on a Tuesday night or Wednesday night to accommodate the average student schedule. So that's what we plan to do. We plan to see the average times where students mostly have schedules at night and we can work that out to whereas we might have an educational event on a Monday or a Wednesday night and have a social event on a Thursday night. Okay. And what about the student that's from the Bronx who has to leave by 2 p.m. but still has to pay the student activity fee? What do they get? I have fellow friends who are from the Bronx and they support. They come out, they find a way to get home. Sometimes they stay over and like stay overnight in the residence hall. But if they want to attend the event, they, they find a way to get there. If they like what they see, they come out. That's the best we can do. But we will always try to find a way to advertise and always trying to find the best way to accommodate all students. Okay. My um, the same question for Keith. Well, I think you just got to be a little assertive. You got to give the students some sort of value, like, why would I come to this event? If you try to make our school, you know, similar to like UNC and schools like that, they have events on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, they have over 90% students show up. They have to sell out the tickets limited to the student body because they have so much outside. You have to give people some sort of value. And also give them um, appreciation, like, hey, if you come to our event, we provide transportation. Like, they have an event at CW Falls, we usually provide transportation. Why can't we do that? We have a budget allocated to you guys over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Having a few of that, you know, funds allocated to getting people safe because no one really wants to take the train after you've been on a party two a.m. at night in New York City. Out, fall asleep on the train, rats will creep up on you. So <laughs> If you want to you know, allocate stuff to people, make them feel appreciated. Like, come to our event. Hey, I'll make sure you get home safe. Do you have a bus going to the Lucas concerts? I don't. I don't. But for other events, like. Um, same question. Okay. Well, like I was saying before, we're hoping to have off-campus events as well. Um, so then the student that has to leave at 2 p.m. maybe in the city would be a little closer to them, or a museum in the Bronx would be closer to their house, and then they won't have to worry about being on campus late at night or whatever and leaving um, and trying to get home with you know the rats all over the place. Um, 
but also the students that are in the evening, um, we're trying to accommodate them by having morning events. And similar to Akeem, Saturday, Sunday events. I know some of the students can't come out on Saturdays, so Sunday events, and then some students can't come out on Sunday, so Saturday events. And then um, you just pick a time when you can. Uh, we're hoping for multiple events. It's not just like a one weekend of the semester event. So it's it's really it's it's meant to bring more students out. The there's seven days in a week, and you can't just focus on three or four of those days. You've got to work with all seven. Otherwise, most of the students aren't going to be supportive. They're not going to care. They're not going to come out. My question is for all three candidates. Um, first, I'd like to pose it to Jermaine. Uh, what have you done to increase funding for student clubs and organizations? And for the other candidates, what will you do? Yes, uh, this year, a fellow executive treasurer, for the first time in many years, the highest allocation ever in SGA history. We allocated over $250,000 to organizations around this campus. And because of that, I can tell you, at least only about about 10 organizations came to us asking that we could, that we ran out of money, can we ask for more money? 10 organizations out of 89 this year, and uh, we are proud of that, that we gave out most of our budget to the uh, organizations because it's their first. So that's what we did. And we plan, hopefully, we don't know what the budget will be like next year, but if re-elected, we plan to do the same. Well, I think he made a big error, and that's his um, downfall. He always says organization first. I think students should be first, because a lot of students are not part of any organization whatsoever. The majority that was big. of the students are not part of the um, organization. You know, you got to go to um, student activities, you got to get that little yellow form, then you have to send it to the student uh, organization that you want to be a part of, then you respond back to it. Very tedious. But um, actually, if I was to become president, I would try to get more funded. I want to get more money than actual president. What's his name? Steinberg? Steinberg. Steinberg. Yeah, yeah, I say his name wrong. I want to, I want to have more money allocated to the student's body. That's more than his paycheck, which is over $40,000, by the way. And oh, um, we also got to, um, <laughs> We also have to, uh, you know, try to talk to the students, ask them, hey, what do you want to do and what do they want to improve? And it might be like it's a tedious, but surveys is the key. Action is what they want. Don't just make assumptions. That's how come I really haven't put anything on my banner yet. I even haven't started putting myself out there. Like, I'm running, I'm asking, I'm going to ask them, what do you want? Because I want to be there for the student, not for the organization or for the administration. I want to actually make the students have a better experience at LIU. I don't want to come back because, as you know, we have over a 40% transfer rate, under a 20% graduation rate. So we have to do things that make people want to stay. Before I answer, I just want to respond to Jermaine's comment. Um, my club, uh, APHA, which is American Pharmaceutical Society uh, Association, I'm sorry, we were one of the ten clubs to ask for more funding. But let me clarify why. We received less than half of what we asked for in our budget kit, and we are the largest club on campus. And Seeing as how we have such an outstanding membership and we received so little funding, we were forced to go ask for money. And when we were turned down, we didn't know why. Um, I see now because the money was allocated to clubs unfairly, um, seeing as how clubs that had lower memberships got most of the money that we were supposed to get. And so when we did that, we were very put back. We had to cancel some of our events. And that's very unfair to the students. When you promise them an event, you want to be able to, to follow through. You don't want to ask them to put up money more than their tuition, more than the student activities fee, the $65 that they pay every semester. So that's it's very unfair, and it's just it, it shouldn't be done, because you should keep the students in mind. When you're in a position of power, you have a lot of responsibility. So you should really be responsible with it. Um, also now, to, to answer the question, um, to raise funding, we're going to um, look for fair um, allocation of funds. That way, we don't need to be in a situation where students don't have enough money in their club budget. And so, you know, it just it takes some time, and I know some people don't want to spend the time, but it should be spent uh, taking into consideration which clubs have so many events, which clubs have so many members. Um, that attend their events, et cetera, et cetera, so that the funds are dealt with properly and the money is not just splurged on nothing or gone to waste for the year. Thank you. 